talked about the hood, right? This is Robin Hood. You should have had Maid Marian married. Maid Marian married a hood, right? Maid Marian married a hood. And on this one, what was, and the main reason, Robin Hood, if we were looking out for that one. And on the other side, if you were looking at that one, what was the crow doing on the telephone wire? Making a long distance call, call, right? Because of cell phones, you probably don't make long distance phone calls because you just make cell calls, right? So this is getting a little off silly, but that was the answer. On this page, if I was looking for your solution, these are the answers I should have seen on your paper. This first one, if I was looking at this, should have been equal to 173 over 990. Number two should have been equal to 4 and 37.99. Number three should have been equal to five and four hundred and twenty-one, nine hundred and ninety-nine. And the last one, the really ugly number, you should have had eight, three, six, four over nine thousand nine hundred and ninety. We didn't have anything for you to do is when we take a look at number 28, square root of 28, please draw down below two number lines. Okay? We need to have two number lines. Today's homework, I'm going to have you, so two straight lines below each one. On the top line is always going to be our square roots, and the bottom line is going to be, so this is going to be in between what two square roots, and below that is going to be the two numbers. Now, let's list just really quickly <coughs> your perfect squares. List up to 100, your perfect square. Meaning one, four, nine, just write those to the side so you have those, okay? Because what you're always looking at, what I had someone doing this morning when they were in, you're always looking at which two perfect squares it's in between. Okay? We don't have any bigger than 100, right? We don't have to go past 100. Could you keep going? You need to tomorrow. You have to do all 20 squares all ten cubes. Okay? So, 28. If I'm looking at square root 28, what would you tell me if I'm looking at where it's in between, Nolan? Which two perfect squares? Wait, what two perfect squares? 25, 36. So we're going to go 25, we're going to go 36. Would you say just by looking at that, do you think it's closer to 5 or closer to 6? Closer to 5, right? Because 28 is pretty close to 25, right? Okay? So everyone should be writing in the notes. This is going to be 5.5, right? Halfway between 25 and 36. This is our halfway point up here. When I'm finding that halfway point, 25 plus 36. When I add those together, that gives me 61. You don't have a calculator tomorrow. <coughs> Halfway to 60 is what? 30. So this has to be 30.5. Okay? Can't have a calculator tomorrow. So remember, you're dividing this by 2 to get this number. Now, if this is 30.5, that means in between 25, we have to have 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, right? Then here's 30.5. So in between five and five and a half, we have to have 5.1, 2, 3, and 4, right? 5.1, 2, 3, 4, equally spaced. So 25, 26, 27, 28. Down here, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, what would you say it looks like? About 5.3, okay? 
So if I am looking at that, I would take 5.3 for an answer. Okay, you gotta fill all this in. So we are looking at this one being 5.3 approximately. We're going to do this one together and then you guys are going to do the last one. Oh, it's negative. Negative 98. <coughs> so 98 is between 81 and 100. But on number lines, I want you to look over here on the wall. You see where you have zero, and then you go negative one, two, three, and they go bigger negative as you go down. So this has to be the negative square root of 100. Does that make sense to everyone? And this has to be negative 81. Whereas if we were doing positive numbers, right, this would be 81 here and 100, okay? But because they're negative, this is negative 9, this is negative 10. When you think about your number line, this is zero here, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so today in your homework, you're gonna have positive and negatives, okay? On the test, I really only care about you approximating the negatives, all right? So if we are looking at this one, okay? Patrick, where is halfway between negative nine and negative 10? Thank you. Negative. I have some people who will tell me this is going to be negative 10.5. Can you make that that can't make sense? Okay. All right. So, 98. Okay. Negative 98. Do we really need the halfway point? What do you think it's closest to? 100. It's really close to 100, right? And so if this is 100 and this is 81 or 80, this would maybe be like square root of 90 something. Do you agree? No. Approximately. Okay. So if I was looking at that, that's like the square root of 90 is going to be in the middle because halfway between 80 and 100 is 90. And so if we're going to approximate this, what do we think square root of 98? What would you guys be thinking from this? 9.8? What if somebody else says negative 9.9? .9? I would give credit to both if I could see your 99, right, or 99, 98, that that's going to be really close in here depending on how big your number line is, okay? I want you right now to try that square root of 72. 72 is between 64 and 81, okay? And so if I put that down below that, then I am going to need, Riley, what? I'm going to have between 8 and 9. And our halfway point then was 8.5. And would you find the middle? Someone want to tell us what they had for their middle? What'd you have for the middle, Matt? Matthew? All right, so if we're going to add 64 and 81, what'd you end up with? 145. If I want to divide by 2, 145 divided by 2, right? I'm going to find my halfway point. So 2 goes into 14, 77 times, right? So 14. And now I'm going to have 2 goes into 5, how many times? Twice. 72. That's going to give us a 4, right? 72.5. Oh my gosh, are we loving life, right? Because my answer then has to be 8.5, right? So on the quiz tomorrow, you have three like these, okay? I don't know if it'll be that nice, but I give you one that nice, right? Repeating decimals without using your calculator. First one, how do we start off? Raise your hand, someone want to tell me. Yes, go, ma'am. 1x, write it out. 1x, write it out. This is 0.555. Your next step would be to do what? Tell me. Want to keep going? 10x because 1 repeats, right? So 10x equals. When I write this new number, what do I get when I move that decimal over 1? Go. 5.55. How many fives do you need to write? Maybe two or three behind there, right? Does that make sense? All right. Now what do I do with 10x and 1x? Next step. What do you got, Abigail? 
subtract 1x. 10x minus 1x, I don't <coughs> like that, that's 9x. What was 1x equal to, Abigail? Your 0.53 PE. And I line those up. And I do the subtraction and I get 5, because all of those cancel, right? And now my goal is to find 1x. And this is where I've noticed some of you struggle. You're just like, oh, well, it's 5 9. The reason it's that 5 9 is you have to divide so that you get a 1 in front of x. 9 divided by 9 equals 1x. And on this side, and you can then just circle this answer on your quiz. You can put it right by it up here. Remember, the goal is a fraction. Okay? Next one. You guys ready? What should I be multiplying by? 10 or 100? 10. When I multiply by 10, I'm going to have 10x equals 2.66. I'm only going to do a couple of sections. Minus 1x, 0 0.26. 9x, ooh, this one doesn't cancel in, <coughs> but it says decimal. You'll have one like that on the quiz tomorrow. This is going to give me 2.4. Okay? What am I doing, Olivia, next? Nine, nine, 2.4 by 10. Uh, not yet. First, we have to divide by 9. So once we have this divided by 9, we have x equals 2.4 over 9. And then I like what you said. We're going to take this times 10. Because we can't have a decimal in a fraction. That doesn't fit our definition of a rational number. So we now add 24 over 90. Now some of you might recognize 24 over 90 because they're both even numbers, but if you leave that on the quiz, I'm going to count it right. If you recognize that they're both even, we can divide them both by 2, right? So 24 divided by 2 would give us 12. And 90 divided by 2 would give me 45. And someone said, oh, I recognize another one. 3 goes into both of those. So you could simplify it further. I would take this answer. I would take this answer. If we divided them both by 3, we're going to end up with 4 fifteenths. I would take any of those three answers. Does that make sense tomorrow? I'm going to take I take the first one. If you're not good at simplifying, stop at that point. I'm okay with that. Okay? All right. So here's what's on the quiz. This is page 20. So turn back in your notes to page 20. A couple pages before this. There are 15 questions, 50 points. The date of your quiz is tomorrow. That is 9-6. So write that in. 9-6, Thursday. By the way, those of you that got your pass assigned to come in this morning, again, if you think you need that tomorrow or for advisory, um, Tomorrow or today, check with me. What are our standards that are going to be on your test? So when I take a look at it, the first thing you are going to have to do, the first thing you're going to see is like your quiz or what, like what's in your notes yesterday. The first thing you have to do is tell me the 20 perfect squares that you've memorized and the 10 perfect cubes. That counts for question one and question two, so I'm going to put two questions, and that is a total of 15 points total right there. <coughs> In that next part, just like we just did, you are going to be asked to approximate square root, so approximate a square root. to the tenths place. And show the two number line. There will be three questions for
four points each. Now this last column, this is for you to kind of like, yep, I got this. Oh, you know what, I only have 15 of those, so tonight that's what I need to work on. So how well do you know this? That might be a check mark, like, yep, I got them all memorized, I've done that. Yep, I can do the number lines, we're going to practice it tonight with a few more. Um, the next one is you're going to be asked to classify. Classify each number. Now I've had a few people come in, I have these babies up in front of the classify numbers. Um, so classify numbers as irrational. rational, whole numbers, right, integer, there are going to be eight questions, two points each. When you classify those, you might have to tell me why. It's a repeating decimal, it's rational. It was a terminating decimal rational, right? So giving those. Then I'm going to ask you to explain the difference. Explain the difference between rational and irrational. This is where you're giving me that whole list. Rational and irrational. Oh, because it's a repeating and a terminating and a perfect square and a whole number in the integer that makes it rational. And it's a non-perfect root, right? And it doesn't repeat and it doesn't end. That would make it irrational. Um, there is one question, it's four points. If for the basic on that, you tell me rational is a fraction, irrational can't be written as a fraction, you probably get half the point. So try and come up with more, right? The more you can put, the better. And then the last thing you're going to do is just like we were just doing is that repeating decimal. So the last thing you have to do is write a repeating decimal as a fraction. Some of you are getting so much better at that. Some of you are still struggling. It is only going to be three points, so I don't want you to freak out and think that, oh.